Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Engineering Student Experience Podcast. My name is Paul Nissenson, and I'm a faculty member in the Mechanical Engineering Department at Cal Poly Pomona. Today's episode is all about what it's like to be an engineering student who has survived most of the curriculum and is just about to graduate. Recently, I sat down with two mechanical engineering students who are currently in their senior year, Cesar Moreno and Noemi Guerrero. We discuss why they wanted to become engineering students, their growth both academically and personally since entering college, their successes and regrets, and their future plans. Anyone who aspires to be an engineering student or is currently a new engineering student can benefit from Cesar and Noemi's advice. I hope you enjoy the conversation. All right, I am sitting here with Cesar Moreno and Noemi Guerrero, both mechanical engineering students, uh, both senior students just about to, to get out of here from Cal Poly Pomona. Thank you both for being here today, giving up uh, part of your Friday to share your experiences. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So, yeah, so you're here today because we wanted to capture your, your thoughts, uh, your emotions, and um, anything else you have to share about this moment in time, about being a senior, about to enter the workforce. Uh, and before we get into all of that, um, I'd like to get a little bit of background uh, from you both. So um, back when you guys were in high school, which would have been, what, five, six-ish years ago? Mm -hmm. About five years ago. Five. Okay. <laughs> um, how much did you know about engineering back then? Like when you heard the word engineer, what did you think about, Cesar? So for me, you know, it, it was definitely complete. Now that I'm towards the end of my, I guess, career here at Cal Poly, it, it was definitely, I definitely had a completely different idea than than what I think of engineering now. Um, back when I was in high school, I kind of heard engineering, and I I would kind of have more of an idea of what you would think of a a mechanic. I think I, I always thought of a more uh, hands-on kind of job. You know, like. Basically, I heard engineering and I, you would watch the movies, you know, Iron Man and everything. And, oh, yeah, he's an engineer. And you would just kind of think of uh, somebody that puts all this stuff together and just grabs pieces of metal and turns it into, I guess, the Iron Man suit in this case, you know. And um, it was just, uh, for me, it was more like somebody that could just put all this stuff together. And like an I, inventor. Huh? Like an inventor? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's kind of the idea I had about engineering. To be honest, that was just kind of of a concept I had, and I I was sure it wasn't completely right, but I just I kind of had pretty much no idea what it actually entailed. It was just kind of maybe something like this. Mm. Uh, for me, I think I was lucky enough to have been exposed to it in middle school because I did the Mesa program, and my professor was a civil engineer. Mm. So I was lucky enough to where he says, "Well, here's what it mostly is: you design something, you do the math, and figure out if it'll work or not, and if it fails, go back and redo it." But I don't think I got the full scope of how much math would be necessary until maybe my late senior year of high school and then starting here at Cal Poly too, same thing. You don't realize how much analysis actually goes into it because you get a lot of like, like you said in the movies, you see them putting things together and you think, oh cool, so they're inventing things. I get to do hands-on stuff. So I think that's why I kind of chose mechanical engineering is because you get to do the hands-on stuff. And in the end, it's more, well first you have to do all the calculations. And then you get to do the hands-on stuff and see if it works. Yeah, you don't see too many integrals in Iron Man, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the MESA program, by the way? Uh, so the MESA yeah. program is called the Math Engineering Science... Science. Uh, something else. A. <laughs> a. <laughs> I forgot what the A stood for. Okay. But it's a program that they start as early as middle school and they say, okay, well, you're going to build a popsicle bridge or you're going to build a toothpick bridge or made out of manila folder, the manila folder one was kind of difficult. <laughs> or they'll have you do um, egg drop experiments. And they do th minor things to kind of get you into the mindset of what an engineer would start to do in terms of basic concept design. And then that eventually leads into other pathways. Like my high school had an engineering course pathway mm. with Project Lead the Way. So that oh, wow. okay. Mesa was like a predecessor going into Project Lead the Way. Okay. So what drew you both into engineering, why did why did you decide to to you know why did you decide to enter say mechanical engineering versus civil versus how did you guys make that decision? Uh, doing the Mesa program, I realized I hated designing bridges. <laughs> well, so that would take civil out, right? So yeah, that's okay. like civil right out. Um, I knew I didn't. I wasn't into designing roads or bridges or anything like that. So civil wasn't an option. I didn't like 
chemistry too much because it was not as concrete as I would have liked. So chemical mm. wasn't an option either. Industrial was okay, but I didn't really like the business side of it so much. Really, my main focuses were between aerospace and mechanical. And in the end, I decided to go more general, so mechanical. I can apply myself to any career field, and I ended up in the automotive industry. So mm. that's really lucky for me. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, for me, I was kind of set on the path early on. Um, my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, they were all mechanical engineers. And you had no choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of grew up with that. They, they never really, um, you know, my parents and my family, they always kind of told me to go my own way and choose whatever I wanted to. But just being so close to what they would do, it just kind of, I grew a liking to it. And um, when it came time to the, decide what major, you know, when you're doing your college applications and they ask you, oh, what major are you applying to? Um, it wasn't about uh, which engineering to do. Um, the one I did consider was mechatronic engineering. Um, after looking a little bit more into it, I like like she said, I decided to um, go with a more general than mechatronic. I felt specialized more in robotics. It was always, if it was gonna be engineering, it was always gonna be mechanical for me, um, just because of that. And it was more about me, uh, I was deciding, I think, whether to go into pre-med or pre-law or engineering and at the end well here I am you know I decided <laughs> to go into engineering I talked to a couple people and uh, about the jobs they do and so that's kind of when I knew more about what engineers do and everything and it's just uh, after hearing what their day-to-day -day was actually in the industry um, because you know it's it's one thing to be in school for however many years it takes you to do your major but at the end of the day after you graduate it's what you're gonna do as your job for the rest of your life, so that's what I, kind of what I was focused on. Not not so much about the career in the in the major, but as in after you graduate and what your day to day tasks would be. And after I talked to some people, engineering was the one that kind of drew me the most, like something I would enjoy the most. So that's kind of why I picked mechanical engineering. So when you guys um, got to college and you're you know, freshman sophomore, what was that like? How was that different than high school? Did that did your uh, opinion about engineering change? Uh, yeah, what was your experiences like back then? It was definitely daunting. Uh, I uh, I didn't um, visit any of the campuses before I I decided to come to Cal Poly. I kind of based my decision more on uh, academic standing of the of the different campuses, and you know the. Uh, a bunch of other factors that I didn't re necessarily need to visit the campus for. And so when I came here as a freshman, it was the first time I see the campus as well. So I was getting a tour and uh, I went to Steel Cane High School, which isn't really that big. So when I came here and I saw all these buildings, first of all, I was like, wow, there's it's almost like a city in here, you know? And we have, I, it was completely mind-blowing for me to think that we have like a Carl's Jr. or something inside <laughs> inside of our school like that did not that I did not expect that but also um, once I started taking classes um, it was a little bit disappointing at first um, you start with the basics obviously and as a freshman I just did not get that you know I had these ideas like like I said before you see in the movies and what I was going to be doing and you know you're here learning vector statics and all these math classes that you need for to take your upper division engineering courses and it's just numbers and math and calculations and it's just gruesome <laughs> <laughs> and i actually had a a friend that uh came and he was here for the first year and a half and he decided to drop out of engineering and go into business school mm. and when i asked him why he said just just not at all what i expected uh, but I mean, now I'm, I'm glad I got through that because once you get to the upper um, engineering courses, you definitely, you definitely see why you needed to take those basics and how it all comes together to do what you actually want to do at the end, you know, whether it's um, designing, um, analyzing for safety or whatever is the specific field you're going into. It's, you definitely need the basics and you need to know how to do it. As, as boring and gruesome as these classes are, it, it's extremely helpful and they're really fundamentals 
of um, everything that comes later or the classes you would more more likely think of when you think of engineering as, as opposed to just crunching numbers. Mm. Naomi, what was, what was the uh, first year or two like for you? So much of the same. It was a lot of disappointment where you're like, oh, I'm just learning all these weird abstract concepts and it's not as applied as you would want it to be initially. And you kind of sit there thinking, do I really want to learn all of this weird conceptual stuff? I don't know if I'm going to actually use it for anything. You have all these industry professionals saying, oh, you don't use that again after whatever year that you take it last. <laughs> yeah. And you go, ah. Oh. But you don't fully appreciate how basic and fundamental those concepts are until your third, fourth, and fifth year, like you said, with the upper divs. Because that's when it all starts coming back and it all starts to click. And you go, oh, okay. So I use differential uh, equations in like heat transfer or in vibrations exactly. in different classes like that and then that's when you kind of start falling back in love with the major and you go okay I'm glad I stayed and you get friends who say oh well I didn't think I was gonna be able to hold off but if they did they probably would have stayed with it if they had known exactly where it was gonna go mm. I think that's part of it is they say oh yeah you're gonna get to do all this but then they throw you in and it's completely opposite of what it is until you learn the basics yeah. then they throw you into what they told you it was gonna be like mm. Yeah, and I think a, a class that helps, uh, I took it, um, unfortunately, I put it off um, taking it. I wish I'd been one of the first classes I took was, uh, like, um, I think it's called ME100 right now. So that'd and it's be basically like orientate, oh, sorry. No, yeah, uh, the orientation, uh, yeah, that's what it's called, uh, orientation for engineers, um, or intro to mechanical engineering, I guess. And... When I took that class, uh, we got to do a bunch of uh, hands-on projects, and that kind of once I got to that, you know, that kind of helped me push through a little bit of these classes, like, and kind of gave me the mindset of like, oh, at least at one point, this is kind of there were smaller, easier projects, but it gave me an idea of maybe at one point what I could be doing. And um, I also want to add too that I forgot to mention this, but my first year in, as a mechanical engineer. It was also kind of a shock, you know, you come from high school and even if, you know, I took a, a lot of AB classes and everything, so I was used to um, doing a decent amount of work. But you come from high school and you start a uh, major such as mechanical engineering, which is, in my opinion, you know, the heavily loaded major. And it's kind of a shock. You, you start taking all these classes and it, right from the get-go, the professors, they give you the assignments that you need to succeed. and you need to figure out very quickly how to balance that and be able to time management, I think, is, is the word I'm looking for. And that's a huge plus to be able to figure it out really quickly. Unfortunately for me, it took me a good couple of quarters to get that down. But uh, it's definitely one of the most important skills, I think, I'd suggest in, in being able to have a successful career as a, a mechanical engineer, to be able to handle all the different classes and projects, and especially if you're going to do internships or something, the classes alone are daunting. And add that add a work to that or an internship and it, it just gets really difficult to balance. But it's definitely very rewarding. Mm. You're right. That was like the first big shock. It was like getting hit with a train, realizing how much work you have to put in to be able to basically understand your classes. Not even like fully fully grasp the concept, but just to barely understand it. You put in so many hours, you end up there was a quarter where I was averaging four hours a night. Because I was studying so much, yeah, of sleep. Mm, yeah. That quarter, I mean, I had 20, 12, uh, 20 units, but still, <laughs> you, just to put in the time to understand something, you put in so many hours, and then in the end, you get maybe a, an abysmal grade, and you go, okay, well, all this effort <laughs> went to a C. Yeah. Like, how much more do I need to put in to get a B or an A? Exactly. And that's the, the biggest shock. But ironically, my grades jumped after I started working, too, with school. It's uh, usually not, not what happens. <laughs> yeah. <but> yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe it kind of pushed you, right, to be more efficient, be, be more efficient and more mindful of your time, mm -hmm. you know, and be more organized. I, for me, I, I don't know if I would have been able to handle that. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, besides getting better with, with time management, um, how have you changed um, as a student and as a person from those first year or two till now when you're just about to, to get out of here? <laughs> So for me, that would be understanding that you can't necessarily expect perfection, no matter how much work you put into it, you're going to forever have to learn something new, or you're going to forever fail at some little thing. And to not to take it to heart, because even in industry, big professionals make mistakes, mm -hmm. and you just kind of have to catch them as they come along. 
you learn you learn that school isn't supposed to teach you to be perfect 100% of the time, but to learn how to work around whatever risks or ch challenges are in front of you. And you can sort of apply that to other aspects of your life too, instead of like just academics, but even like personal, like familial relationships or work relationships, work applications, anything. You can, you realize, okay, so I have to f analyze what it is that I'm doing and work towards improving whatever my behavior is or whatever my analysis or approach to things are. Yeah, no, definitely. I definitely agree with that. And, you know, from when I was a freshman to now, um, I, I definitely think I've, I've changed quite a bit. And um, going back to what I said with the time management, you know, that's not only for school, it helps you with other things. You know, you, you learn to kind of give a sign kind of some time for your friends too. And you learn that it's important to, as much as you're dedicating to school, um, to kind of keep your mind healthy too and you know uh, go out sometimes and talk to your friends and kind of clean your head a little bit and also my mentality from freshman till now um, focusing on the academic point of view is when I was a freshman and even a sophomore I avoided office hours like the play <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to go to office hours I thought it was you know I don't know what I thought I don't know if it was um, there's embarrassment of showing up and asking the professor for help or just shyness or I don't know what it was but now office hours are my friends <laughs> and um, even uh, getting help with questions you know if, if you go to a lecture and afterwards um, you didn't really get it just go right away to the as soon as you can to this office hours and um, get some help with that or you know uh, just talking to the professors the experiences they've had they always I mean it's a wealth of knowledge at your disposal too. The, the professors are always very willing to help you if you show up, but you have to, you have to t take the first step towards them. You know they're always there waiting for you, and you have to show up and, and ask the questions that you need. And just in general, like uh, she was saying too, with family and everything, it definitely changes you as a way of, I want to call it the engineering mentality. You know, and, and it applies to everything. They kind of engineering teaches you. A way of approaching problems you know and as much as you learn all the calculations and all the formulas and all the different approaches um, so what you need is a way of thinking about what you learn is the way of thinking about problems and I found that the more I learn about that the more it's applied into other aspects of my life you know um, obstacles come out throughout my life and I've, I've been kind of putting them in a different mindset and being able to work out not necessarily the perfect solution, but um, the best solution that works for me at the time. Hmm. So during, um, you, as you evolved from a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, did you find yourself, or how did you change the amount of time you spent on studying you know, projects? Did, was more time required as you went through the curriculum? and? If so, how did that change your, your sort of work-life balance? For me, it, um, it definitely increased throughout the years. Um, I don't know if that's for everyone, but for me, definitely, like I said, my first year here was trying to figure things out and definitely did, it, did not spend as much time as I should have um, in my first courses. And from that, it grew because I realized I needed to put in more time. Like uh, Noemi was saying, um, you know, you for every maybe two hours that you're in the lecture, you need to think about maybe two or three hours per hour of between homework and reviewing the material. And you definitely don't think about that when you're signing up for classes for the first time. But it, it is a lot of work, and especially uh, going into the upper division classes um, as, as my career pro progressed, uh, I definitely found a huge difference in you know you get these new projects and they are a lot more involved you know you it's not it's not directly that the professor tells you how to do it and then you just go home and work the problem out it's here's a project here's the concepts um, do your own research and figure out how to put this together and then write a good report and explaining and everything and it, it takes time to learn all these um, field or industry practices, but it's definitely been, like I said before, it's, it's very rewarding to think about how much you've progressed and yeah, you put in more time, but at the same time, 
the subjects, at least for me, become more interesting, more directly applied to what I thought I was going to be doing at the beginning. So I do put in more time, but I also enjoy more the time I'm putting in to each different project. And they're becoming more and more in real applications as opposed to when you're starting out, you know, you get these problems and they give you all the requirements for the problem and you'll almost kind of put it into an equation and get the answer. And now it's they give you the basics of the problem, almost like an industry problem, but not quite as hard. But they give you the basics of the problem and it, you have to do a lot more research to to be able to solve it as opposed to just kind of plug and chug, as they say. Mm. Definitely, my first few years, most of my time, quote unquote, studying, went to doing what I call busy work. So mm. in your math classes, you get maybe 50, 60 problems, and it's the same. It's just plug and chug. They go, here's points A and B, here's the equation that'll get you points A and B, and you're done. Yeah. And you go and do that for 50 problems. <laughs> and then same thing, but the further you progress with your career, the more it's like, okay, here's points A and B, now here's maybe two thirds of the steps to get there. <laughs> and now one third, and now nothing here. You know, you've learned all this stuff in the last four or five years, go ahead and apply it. So you go, oh, okay, this is exciting. <laughs> so you're wanting to spend more time on it and you're wanting to come up with what you think is the most exciting and the most enthusiastic way of approaching a problem. And it may, may or may not be the most efficient, but at least you're more excited and you're willing to put in all that extra time. Uh, it really kind of depends on how excited you are for the class or how much time you need to put in the class as you realize, okay, maybe I'm struggling a little bit more in this class or, you know what, these concepts are super critical for maybe four or five more classes down the line. I should really get them down. It really, it changes in the sense that you want to put in more time as opposed to before where it's like, oh, here's another 50, 40 problems of the same stuff that we went over for two hours in class. Why? And now it's like, oh, okay, so they went over like the basic concept. Now let me see how I can come up with a solution to this. So I get excited with the upper dips because it's all, now it's applications. And that's what you, what you wanted since you, if you were wanting that as an engineer, you finally get it in your upper dips. Okay. So it's, it's like that reward, like you said, it's here's right. the finish line. To cross it, you get to do all these fun things mm. and you want to jump through those hoops. Right, and, and like you say, I definitely agree with that, that term, um, busy work. Unfortunately, sometimes it, it is necessary, but I definitely, uh, you don't know how many problems I had to do, but it was exactly the same thing, you know, I just change the values a little bit, plug it in, and you get the same answer. And I definitely agree with what you said about there's a certain excitement when it's a challenging problem, and when they don't give you all the necessary requirements for the problem, and you have to kind of find your own solution. Some of the um, I have a specific class in mind right now. It's actually a thermal systems engineering. And we recently had a, another project that we had to turn in. And it was a, that type of problem where they, it was a presented problem and not a lot of information was given regarding that. And we kind of designed a heat exchanger. And it was really interesting to see that in a class of, I don't know, maybe 35 people, there was 35 different answers that people got because that's uh, I think that's a more realistic problem you know you don't necessarily have a solution to something in, in the industry or in the engineering world you find the the best solution you can come up come up with you know and then you write a report explaining why you came up with this solution and why you think it's the best one and what what how it solves the problem but there's definitely a lot of different options that or ways that could have been done differently and that, that I think that's what really really interesting to me to find the best possible solution you can yeah, and just a, a, a word for anyone who's listening who's not yet familiar with college that much. So um, upper div would be upper division courses, which students will usually get in the last couple of years. And these are the more challenging courses where everything starts uh, coming together. Um, so I see on Noemi's collar that she has a tag that says engineering intern. And so what I, my question for both of you is, um, well, obviously Noemi has, has an internship. Um, uh, what has been the importance of internships uh, for you? Uh, and also, have you been part of any clubs? And what have you gained from that experience? Uh, for me, the importance of internships has been getting to see where exactly your courses get applied in industry. It's one thing to learn it in the classroom to say this project is explicitly controls or it's explicitly fluids or thermo. Mm -hmm. But to go into industry, they say, okay, the client wants this, figure out how to deliver it to them. And you go, okay, well, maybe I need to consider some materials, maybe I need to consider some sort of delivery system, or I need to consider 
what kind of fluids I'm going to be using. For, in my case, we build buses. So if a client wants a specific brake system, I have to consider all the, if I want um, an air system or if I want hydraulic systems and if mm. I, what kind of materials I'm going to be mounting it to, what kind of um, shock it'll have to take. It's interesting in that it's, there's so many different parameters when you're designing an industry that the internship kind of helps cement the, that this was a good career choice, personally. Um, even just landing it was a huge shock for me because you you have some companies that are specific. They say, okay, we just want this one specific field, but then you go in and it's actually, oh yeah, they, this specific field, but you have to know all of your other stuff too. Uh, my club, SHIP, is the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. So they teach you a lot of professionalism and how to communicate in the workforce, and I think that helped out a great deal too because I speak to my manager and he goes, okay, well, you know what? We have our client, for example, BAE Systems came in. Okay, so BAE is coming in, or SolidWorks. I need you to sit in the meeting and then we're going to talk about whatever program we're going to be installing mm. or anything like that. It's cool because they start pushing you further up as to where, as opposed to if you were starting brand new in a company and you don't know anything about speaking to clients or professionals, you get thrown into it immediately and it's just that immersive uh, feeling is what really mm. I've been taken away from the internship and from my club activities. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I haven't done any, I guess what you call directly an internship, but I've had the experience of working um, in my parents' company or in family friends' company. And it's definitely like what Naomi was mentioning, you know, you, you, it definitely helps you, or I'm guessing it helps you, you know, I, I don't have a job yet, but when I go out there, it, I, I feel a little bit more prepared to kind of hit the ground running. And, um, you know, preparing, it's definitely a, a different experience from what I've had for from what the academic curriculum is and from what you actually do in industry. You know, you're, you're here in college and um, you try to prepare as best as you can in, in, um, in your classes and they go over all the concepts in a very general way but teach you the basics. But once you're out there, especially you choose a company and you kind of focus on whatever that company is doing. You know, as a mechanical engineer, the range of jobs that we can go into is way too broad to just cover in an undergraduate degree. So it teaches you the basics and you go into whatever field, like uh, Naomi was saying, she went into automotive. And that's completely different than if you want to go into aerospace or construction or any other field. So it's definitely gives you a field. Also, you know, I would always thought, I always thought that I wanted to go into automotive. And then I started doing some, you know, with other clubs, I started doing some aerospace work. and. It helps you get a feel of what you actually want to do and what it actually is once you're working on it. I had the opportunity, I, I still am um, in the Emirates team right now, uh, which is the mobile rocket engine test stand. And what we're doing right now is we're building, basically as the name entails, is a, a, mobile te a mobile test stand to be able to test a rocket engine that will later put, be put in the launch vehicle. Um, to be shot up to, I think the first test is going to be 33,000 feet and uh, it's going to continually keep increasing until the third year, I think it's supposed to get to space. Mm. So it's actually a pretty interesting project, but it's been, it's kind of shown me uh, more of what it ta actually takes to do a, a more directly applied work or project um, and communicate with the team that, you know, in, in this team, like I said, there's the launch vehicle team, there's the mobile rocket engine testing team, there's a feed system team, there's a structured team. And it's crazy how all of this has to come together at some point. And any small miscommunication just throws everything. Boom. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, fingers crossed that won't happen. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that could easily, it's just a small number difference or something could easily... Um, mess that up and it, it definitely shows you how important that is so i definitely put a lot of emphasis on if you can um, find a club or an internship um, at the very least you'll be learning how to communicate with people which is a uh, mm. i don't know if um anyone that's listening to this has heard some of the previous podcasts but when we had matt and don here before they talked about how important it was to be able to communicate with your um, fellow employees you know and it's definitely helps you put a step in the right direction for that. I definitely noticed too that at career fairs, if you have technical projects, they don't care so much what the project was about, but what you took away from it and how you're mm. able to apply that to a real, a real situation. 
For example, over the summer, I did a technical project with SHIP, same thing. It was a self-sustainable home. And it, they didn't care so much that I was doing like thermo or fluids or whatever it was. I mean, obviously it matters. But what they cared about more was what I, what I did to improve the system. So I told them, oh, switching a specific insulation, and I gave them solid numbers that I calculated myself. I said, oh, well, when I switched the insulation, the price went up $200, uh, $200, but you ended up going from 17 uh, kilowatts per hour of heat lost to just 17 watts per hour lost. And that would impress them. They go, oh, how did you figure that out? So then you show them the cost analysis method that you use, and they get excited because you're thinking critically. Mm -hmm. That's that's what they want to see is what you took away from the project and what you could potentially put forward going into another position. Mm. So you, um, you both have mentioned that uh, you gained better time management skills as the uh, years progressed. I'm wondering um, what else do you wish that you could have um, done differently, say from the beginning part of your engineering career till till now? So you can go back in time. Uh, yeah, I what? was thinking if like the typical, you know, if you could go back and do this again. <laughs> yeah. And you know, as a, at least for me, you know, as a senior engineer graduating, I, I kind of think about that a lot and <laughs> find myself thinking, you know, what, what if you know and uh i think some some key things i would suggest definitely number one is the internship i would have liked to get more industry experience throughout even even as a freshman you know people come in and freshmen come in and you don't really think about getting a, uh, an internship as a freshman because you don't really know anything as an engineer but there's a lot of opportunities out there for not knowing anything that the company will teach you and they'll train you to do the work they want you to do and it's going to be an entry level position or not entry i guess entry level internship position where you they don't really require a lot just that you're willing to work and learn and um also i mentioned before the office hours i think those are very important to take advantage of and ask your professors any questions you might have there not even just about the class but also about um, you know, they, they can be advisors for you too and guiding you in, in your academic career throughout your major. Um, time management is very important. Um, I think I've covered that a little bit before and reading ahead. And, and, you know, that's something as a freshman you absolutely don't want to do. And professors always suggest that. And they always say, you know, next week we're going to be covering chapters four and five. Uh, and, you know, as a freshman, you kind of hear that and it's like, okay, well, thanks for letting me know. You, you don't really do anything about it. and But it, it has helped me tremendously now that when professors say something like that, go into the chat. You don't have to read and understand the whole chapter. Just at least skim through it and uh, see if you have any questions, write them down, and be better prepared to learn the material when the professor actually goes over it. And that way, if you felt like, the concept that you looked or the question you had written down wasn't answered, you can be better prepared for the ask more sensible questions regarding the material. And I think that that definitely helped me a lot to prepare before class about the material that's going to be covered in class. Mm. Going off of what you said, same thing, learning to prepare for your classes ahead of time. You go in your first few years with a high school mentality, which is, oh yeah, the teacher will teach me everything. and. I can do the work on my own because that's what they expect out of you in high school. You mm -hmm. sit there and you do it by yourself and your teacher had hypothetically taught you everything that you need to know to solve the problems. But then going into engineering, you realize, oh, they only maybe skim the surface or start to dig through the surface and you're the one who's supposed to try and reach the bottom on your own. So you learn, okay, well, I've got to sit here, read the book some more once I do the lecture too, not just before but after the lecture too, read it again to see what else maybe um, extra information you can get out of it. But then also learning that as soon as you get stuck, you absolutely need to go get help because the moment you fall behind even one day in engineering, you're set back the entire quarter or the mm -hmm. entire semester, whatever the system would be. Mm -hmm. You have to get help immediately because everything compiles and everything builds upon itself. And in particular, study groups. I wish I did study groups a lot sooner too. It helped to have two other people to bounce ideas off of and to kind of help correct each other and check each other's concepts and say, well, is it true that this, like, you need kinetic energy, for example, <laughs> in this situation, or could we simply get away with using, like, uh, a Newtonian equation? And so you kind of, it helps to bounce ideas, whereas by yourself you kind of sit there in a circular track and you go, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. 
and then you don't do anything. So mm. study groups and reading the material definitely would have helped from the right, right from the get-go. Mm. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that, but definitely that's something that helped me a lot too. And it took me two or three years of being here to find close group of five. I'd, I'd highly recommend that when people are coming in here, find other people or other students in your major that are going to be taking the same class you're going to be taking. And it's going to be a tremendous amount of help throughout your your major here, um, your career, you know, um, be able to call their students that have taken this class before or they took it before you were taking it, especially when they're taking it at the same time as you are. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tremendously helpful to be able to meet up with them and review the concept that was taught in the in the lecture and be able to, like she said, bounce off ideas. Um, you know, maybe you took away a certain concept from the lecture and you kind of say it to him and he goes, no, 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 that's not, that's completely opposite of, of what it was or something. Maybe not something so drastic, but definitely you thought it applied this way and it actually applies something slightly different that maybe he understood and you didn't mm -hmm. or maybe the other way, you know, maybe you could help him. And also what's helped me a lot too is um, teaching or not necessarily teaching, but helping other classmates understand the material helps me understand it a lot better too because if you understand the material enough to where you can explain it to somebody else it definitely forces you to get a better grasp on it and i think a key thing i wanted to mention to you um regarding this is i i kind of come away from college with the idea when when i entered you know you kind of think professors are there to teach me the material like you said and and they're going to teach me what I need to know and I'm going to take the test based on what they said. And I think you should come into college with the mentality of they're not here to teach you. They're here to assist in you learning the material. You know, the, the material is there and they're going to give you the textbook or the notes or whatever it is, depending on the class. And you can go through it. But at the end of the day, they're not they're not here to just shove that information into your brain. They, you got to go through the material and then they're here to clarify any questions or make it easier to navigate through the textbook or anything. But I think it's definitely important to realize that's a key difference in in realizing how much work you have to bring into this rather than just sit there and try to absorb what the teacher or professor is saying. Mm. The key word there might have been people within your major. My earliest study group was we were all the, the three of us were different majors. Yeah. Mm. We had an arrow, a civil, and a mechanical. And then once we all hit our upper divisions, well, new study group. Yeah. <laughs> we were kind of left high and dry. Yeah. So to sort of summarize all the advice that you give for current freshmen, be prepared to do a lot of work. Uh, time management skills are really really important. Go to office hours if you need help. Um, internships and clubs can be really valuable. Um, if you, if you have time, do the do some prep work before going to class, and study groups can be very helpful. Was, was there any any other advice that you'd give to freshmen? It just came to my mind right now, actually, um, and I think this might be the the single greatest advice I can offer to an incoming freshman. And is we all know about these websites, you know, Coopers <laughs> or Rate My Professor, and everything, and a lot of my friends. And I did this too uh, during my first years here. Is you there's a class you got to take, and it's a hard class. And you hear from a bunch of students. Okay, there's there's generally two type of professors, and there's the professor that's really really hard, and you're probably going to end up getting a C in the class because this professor really knows his stuff really well, has been teaching it for 20 years, um, but the tests are really hard. And then there's a professor that, and you'll hear this over and over again from your classmates that take these professors. There's always the other professor that um, it's kind of confusing in his class and it, it's really hard to understand, but uh, the tests are fairly easy and it's, it's not necessarily easy, but it's a lot more doable to um, get a B or an A. And what I want to say is always go for the hard professor. You know, your GPA might take a hit, but it's important to really learn the concepts, especially when you're taking the lower division classes, which are the most more uh, gruesome and at times maybe boring and hard, the, mm -hmm. the more like calculation and basics. Um, you're definitely going to regret it later if you take the easy way out of those and then you're in your 300 or 400 level or upper division classes and you can't do basic um, force calculations or 
you know, if you skim on strength of materials, that's just going to come back and bite you <laughs> later. Definitely the classes I've been strongest in were the same thing. The professors where I took, they were incredibly difficult, but they would teach you as opposed to the ones where you would sit there confused half the time, but at least you would pass, which is nice for a GPA boost. But when you hit your upper divisions and it does start to build up, you go, oh, you know what? I wish I did take this other professor or now I'm going to have to sit back and watch lectures for that class to understand this class. And it sets you back. That's a good point. I didn't think yeah. about that. And, you know, sometimes it's not even just it's not even just a professor. Sometimes and I've had this happen to me, too. It's sometimes what I say is I wish I'd put in more effort into this class. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do the bare minimum to get through a class. You're so busy and caught up with other classes, work, family things or anything else. And you do the bare minimum to get through it. And, you know, sometimes you just say, well, I wish I'd put a, lo a little bit more effort and actually learn the material as opposed to just doing what I needed to get you know, whatever was their required grade to, to pass that class. So it, it, it's a little bit of, of both things. It's picking the right professor and putting the necessary effort into actually learning the material. You know, you, you can get a degree, uh, hopefully not from a uh, university like this, but sometimes you can get a degree and really not know what you're doing because you just did the bare minimum all throughout your, your major to just pass the classes. and. You may have gone away with it at a university, but that's not going to work out once you try to get a job. You're very quickly going to get weeded out from people that know what they're doing and the one that just kind of took the easy way out throughout the whole way. It definitely hits you later. You, you sit there and you go, well, you know what? This is a critical concept that I still use every day, like at work or at school, whatever it is, you realize Maybe I should have tried to put in, even if you don't try to put in the effort, because let's say you want to take your FE too, you basically have to reteach yourself the last four or five years of engineering to right. pass that test, <laughs> or, or at least refresh yourself on those last four or five years. And sometimes you can't do it, you're right. Like you take too many of the same, the same kind of professors where it's a lot of work or it's difficult or you're just too swamped. Just do your best, uh, to be honest. You, you Nobody can manage everything 100% of the time. Just kind of shoot for the best and hope for the best. Mm. Yeah, and I think to add to that, and maybe a lot of people are worried about this, you know, they, they, they're they trying to get the, for example, for mechanical engineers, the four-year pledge, uh, like Naomi was saying, um, right now, I think there's a couple quarters where you have to take 20 units. Yeah. And so that's, that's a, a program that's uh, specific to Cal Poly Pomona, but many universities will have something like this where, where you can get... Um, registration, priority registration, if you um, have the goal of getting out in a certain amount of time, in our case, four years, sometimes honors programs will be set up in a similar way. Right. And, and so based on that, I would just recommend as well, you don't, it, it's it's not a run for it. You know, you don't have to get out of here in, in four years. Just focus more on actually learning the material than trying to get out of here as as fast as you can you know if if you feel, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed between work and you know the classes you're trying to balance and you feel that you're not getting the best out of the classes you're taking you're not able to put your best effort maybe try taking a couple of units off and not like off as in take a break but off as in from the load you're taking and focus do a better work um, in the classes you do decide to to keep for that quarter or semester or we, I guess the, the way to summarize it, it's quality over quantity you know don't, don't try to take all these classes and then mm. do the bare minimum try to take maybe a little bit less classes and and really learn the material even if it takes you an extra year to finish your career I, I think it, that's definitely going to benefit you in, in the long run I was definitely more stressed in the time where I was like oh my god I don't know if I'm going to make it out in four years I got to get it out in four years and then same thing, once you're in college, you go, well, what's the point of taking 16, 20 units to barely understand classes, come out barely understanding engineering, when I could take 12 or 14 units, which is a reasonable amount, I think, as a mechanical engineer. 16 is the average, I think. Mm -hmm. And properly understand the material, properly um, solidify everything that I'm learning and really get a good solid grasp because it all will bite you in the end too if you think you know what I really need to get out in four years like what what will, will the difference be if you get out in four five six years it's not the salary difference it might if your GPA is actually boosted for taking longer yeah but not the other <laughs> way around necessarily yeah, and it's it's very common for engineering students to take you know five years to to get out and often because 
there's more unit requirements to get an engineering degree compared to other degrees. So that, that takes care of current freshmen, but what would you kind of advice would you give to high school students who are thinking about going into an engineering program in college? Is there any kind of advice you can give to the high school students who might be listening? I think something very useful is to do something along the lines of what I did and go out and try to meet actual um, engineers in the industry and ask them about their day and ask them what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And if possible, you know, if you get the opportunity to maybe shadow somebody, and by shadow I mean, you know, actually go into them, go, go with them uh, for a work day and follow them around all day and see what they do. And really see if, um, if, if that's what it interests you. And maybe do a little bit of online research about what it actually is to be an engineer. You know, because there's, there's an unfortunate amount of, of students that come in uh, hoping to get an engineering degree and after the first year or two, um, unfortunately drop out just because it wasn't what they were expecting. And like I said, you know, it definitely, it, it definitely changes between your first two years and your last three to four years. Um, but still, they, you know, you, especially because of the movies and stuff, there's a lot of misnomer, misinterpretation of what an engineer actually does. So I, I would say as, a, as a, an advice to anybody who's thinking about engineering is definitely try to do the, more, the most amount of research you can into what it is an engineer actually does and see if that's actually something you want to do. Mm. So add on to what Caesar said, definitely do that. Look out for professionals. They're more common than you think. Just ask around in your family and they're bound to know someone who's in some sort of technical career, even if it's not necessarily explicitly engineering. Any technical background helps and they may know people who are engineers and get into that. So get around to asking people. If you can even, like, let's say you, don't, you can't figure that out or you're either that step. Try to do programs and projects in school that relate to engineering yeah. and talk to professionals who at least are more familiar with the career. Not just a counselor because the common thing that you hear from engineering students is, oh, my counselor said I was good at math, so I should do engineering. Yeah. No, don't do that. Go and, ask, go and ask people who actually worked with engineers or people who are gi giving concepts that actually relate to engineering, such as MESA programs or Project Lead the Way things like that, those will help significantly for you to understand if this is the career that you want to take because it is a huge shock exactly how much math and abstract concepts you need to learn just to be able to do the fun stuff later. Mm -hmm. And if you're not ready for that, you're, it's like Caesar said, you're going to want to drop out or you're going to be miserable the first few years. But if you kind of get an idea for it, you're going to be more willing to um, hold out and stay with the program. and in the end you're going to see it's very rewarding because you were more aware of what it would take and it's not as big of a surprise. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, these type of programs usually have a, a lot of mentors uh, around them. So it, it's good to get involved and to find somebody that, that does that and ask them questions about it, you know, and see if, if that's something you, you want to get into. You know, and a lot of people say, well, I'm not good at math, but I really like engineering. Don't, I would say maybe not of course, there's a lot of math involved. I'm not going to lie about that, but you don't necessarily have to be a math genius. You know, we have calculators. You have to be able to understand the concepts behind engineering. And so if, if you're not necessarily the best person at math, realize that there's going to be a ton of math involved in this career, but it's definitely doable if, that, if you're sure that's what you want to do. And definitely get involved in those programs, not only because they'll help you get a, a better idea of what engineering is, but if you're trying to get into a good college there, they also look very good in your application that you already, for universities, you know, it's never good when they admit a student and two years later he drops out of the engineering career. So they're always looking out for that too, something that gives them kind of a clue that you looked into what engineering was and that that's you're sure that that's what you want to do so if you have those type of programs they can see that you've taken the time and you learned a little bit about it and you're sure that that's the path you want to follow so it definitely helps you with when it comes around your senior year to college admissions and everything you know mm. so overall what has been if you had to pick one thing 
what was what's been the best uh, part about being an engineering student and if you can give me one thing that was the worst part about being an engineering student I'm gonna start with the worst part and okay. the worst part about being an engineering student and I think it's pretty obvious from from the conversation we've had yeah. so far is the workload it's a crazy amount of workload um, and it definitely takes takes some learning and some practice to be able to master it or at least live with it <laughs> um, it's definitely very daunting and you know uh, having to push through all that stuff but definitely the the best part is at least now that I've, I've been going through my upper division class and I'm graduating in about two months so uh, right now what I've learned is basically what engineering is at this point at least for an undergrad and Definitely the best part is it's been very rewarding to know that I was able to get through it and it has taught me to be able to handle a lot of work. But I guess all in all is it was exactly what I expected or what I've come to appreciate throughout my years as a mechanical engineer student. Um, just the concepts I learned has, and that's because I, that's what I wanted to do since I started is concepts I learned have been it's been very rewarding to to come to the end of a, a major and to see how much more there is out there because I definitely feel like the more I know the more I learn the less I know but at the same time it's so interesting to have this knowledge like culminate into the point where you can tackle a project and actually put something together that you can basically hold with your hands. You know, you talk about designing a heat exchanger, but then you actually build it, put it together, and it works. All the theory you applied and all that, and sometimes it doesn't, you know, it's just part of the learning process. Everything's wrong until you test it anyways. But I think that's that's been the best part of, a, of my career as a mechanical engineer is being able, the, the hands-on projects, and being able to put something together that materializes. And I'm going to take this opportunity here to mention that Cal Poly Pomona, which is the, the university I did my major in, is very good at adding labs and hands-on projects uh, into every class you take here. Not every class, but the majority of the class, or at least the classes where it's very important to get a hands-on or, or a feel for the numbers. You know, you always hear about, um, you know, PSI or pounds per square inch, but when if I say 20 PSI or 200 PSI and you get that from your calculations you don't really know what that means until you go down to the lab and you kind of do an experiment or something that they have and you get a feel for what the numbers actually are so that's one thing I've enjoyed a lot I've called poly moment is the very hands-on experience or as they say the learn by doing experience they have here okay so I guess I'll start with the worst two uh, <laughs> So sounding like a broken record, definitely the shock of the, the workload. Yeah, it's good to give a realistic picture of what uh, people should expect. Yeah. The, it's it, definitely no walk in the park. Absolutely. You, get, you see your friends enjoying themselves and you go, hmm, I still have all this other homework to try and understand. <laughs> That's definitely the worst part. My mentor told me too, he said the first few, like two, three years, every quarter you're going to ask yourself, was this the right major? Should I really stay in engineering? Why am I doing this to myself? But then... Like he said, once you start getting your upper divisions and it all starts to come together, that's when it's worthwhile. But definitely that emotional and mental stress that you take on the first couple of years, realizing exactly what it, to what extent you're going to be working for this degree, that's, that's the worst part. But then the best part is, again, the culmination of all of that is you get to work on projects where you got to put in a little bit of controls, a little bit of thermal, a little bit of fluids, some heat transfer, uh, materials, machine design, dynamics, whatever it is. You get to throw all of that into a project or maybe even just components of that into a project and you go, oh, okay. So these numbers, I can launch an airplane to have stability, that's controls, to figure out the trajectory, that's dynamics, to figure out what material I want, that's materials and stress analysis and strengths. It's really cool just to say, okay, all these things weren't just compartmentalized subjects that I needed to learn, such as like with your general education things like psychology or history, those don't really tie in or um, correlate with whatever you're doing but 
you realize with engineering, everything eventually ties in and they're all interrelated. You start to see the same types of equations, maybe written slightly differently for each class, or you start seeing concepts that are universal for all your classes, and then that's when you get excited and you go, ooh, okay, this is, this is what engineering is. And that's the best part, is getting to see the culmination of all that and getting excited for any little um, challenge that a professor or a, a mentor or a tutor or a professional, anything. Whatever challenge they throw at you, you're excited and ready to throw yourself into it. Mm. So we've talked a lot about the past and, and um, you guys are just about to get out of here, out of uh, university. So mm. what are your guys' plans after college for the next year, let's say? Uh, work, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope to be working. I do have an offer standing in Virginia. Mm. I hope to also potentially get an offer from El Dorado, which is where I'm working currently. And then I'll weigh my options from there. But I do eventually hope to take uh, my PE eventually to become a, a professional engineer and maybe possibly get my master's. And then I'll consider a doctorate, but I don't think it's too realistic either. Most industries, they don't, they either won't pay for the doctorate in terms of once you get the degree, they won't pay you that extra bit or they'll let you go because they can't afford you. Or it just doesn't apply necessarily to what you're doing. So I know for sure I think I want to get my master's, but after that, we'll see. Yeah, I am kind of on the same page here. I uh, definitely after graduation, hopefully find a, a good job and work for a couple of years and then come back and get my master's. That's something I, I know for sure I want to do. But yeah, later for the PhD, um, I, I haven't quite decided on yet. And you know, I really can't predict the future, so I, that's, that's a couple years ahead, so I figured I'll come cross that bridge when I get there. But definitely, uh, uh, for me, my plan is I'm, I'm hoping to go into the aerospace industry mm. um, and you know, see where I go from there, see if that interests me. It might turn out that after working for a couple years, I decide it's not the best industry for me or something. But as of now, I'm really excited of, of uh, checking out some new opportunities there in the aerospace industry. Mm. Well, I want to be mindful of your time. You've been very generous with it so far. Um, last question. Do you guys have any concerns about, you know, when you think about the future, this kind of unknown, uh, do you have any concerns? Um, as for me, no, not really. Mm. I think about the future and I get excited about what it can hold. I mean, I, I guess like that comes with the youth, you know, I'm graduating at 22 years old from from the ME program and I, I don't really think about I'm, there's no really no concern out there and because I think about the worst case scenario and maybe I'm working and I decide I don't want to be a mechanical engineer and even that for me is it holds some degree of excitement just to think of well at some point I'll find what I want to do and and we'll see what new challenges the life brings me but definitely not concern more excited to see to see what happens after you know after this I guess like the undergraduate stage and you know, it comes with time for the industry and just see what's out there and and see what happens mm. perhaps speaking in terms of um, for example job security mm. then I'm not concerned at all I think we're always going to need engineers no matter what the applications may be it could be consumer products it could be automotive or war machines whatever it is there's always going to be some need for a mechanical engineer and I guess what would be a concern is figuring out exactly what you want to do. The same mm. thing, there's so many possibilities especially as a mechanical. I like to relate it to, for bio people, I like to say we're the stem cells of engineering. You learn <laughs> something and then you can be specialized into other parts yeah. of engineering. That That is the most exciting thing. The concern would be if you get bored with something. Let's say I get bored with automotive and I decide to go into naval, which is what got me into engineering to begin with, is naval engineering and technology. Or if I want to go into entertainment, so perhaps like animatronics or uh, uh, stage design, whatever it is, there's, that would be not even concern in a negative way, just, oh, like how, mm -hmm. how, how focused can I be in one specific <laughs> field before I decide, you know what, I'm going to try this. Yeah. And now let's try this. Yeah, and a mechanical engineering degree can take you to all those different places for sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So, uh, Cesar, uh, Noemi, thank you so much for sitting down with me today and you know, hopefully freshmen and future students will be able to benefit from your advice. Those many, many pieces of advice that you gave them, all good. Um, it's wonderful that you're just about to get out of here with a, with a nice degree in hand and I wish you a lot of luck on your future careers. Thank you very much. And thank you thank for you. having us, Dr. Newsom. Thank you for your time. I would like to again thank Cesar Moreno and Noemi Guerrero for spending some time with me today and sharing their experiences of being an engineering student who is on the cusp of becoming a practicing junior engineer. I also would like to thank Cesar for helping record and edit this episode and Cal Poly Pomona for providing funding for this podcast project. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support it by leaving comments wherever you heard the podcast and letting friends and family know about the podcast. Goodbye for now.